What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing? Hello. Hello. Good to see you guys again. I know. You ready for another Chief Chat? Yes. It's a great three. Chief Chat day. <laughs> every, day every day is a great day to Chief Chat, right? Yes. You're right, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, our, our next guest has a really unique story uh, as she took on a life of service in the military while also serving these hands to anyone that gets in the ring with her. So uh, we're super anxious <laughs> to hear, hear her story. So Julie, please introduce today's guest. We are thrilled to host today's guest. She's an active duty soldier participating in the Army's world-class athlete program and a two-time national middleweight championship boxer. She has her eyes on the prize and that's achieving gold in the Tokyo Olympic Games as part of Team USA. Our friends at Army Installation Management Command G9, Family and Morale, well, Recreation and Welfare linked us up with her today. Please give a big Chief Chat welcome to Staff Sergeant Naomi Graham. Hey. Hey. USA. 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 Yeah. How we? How you doing, Sergeant Graham? I'm doing. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Thanks so much for joining us. And for everybody watching, you know what to do. Drop a note in the comments and and from share some love with Sergeant Graham uh, in the comments and leave your questions for her there too. We'll read those live throughout the broadcast. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, you should because we have chief chats lined up every Tuesday and Thursday and great guests are ready to share what they have with you. Well, Sergeant Graham, it's a pleasure to meet you. How you doing? I'm doing great, Chief. How are you? <laughs> doing wonderful, wonderful. And so it, we we super happy that you're here with us today. Um, can you tell us where you're calling us from and how you've been faring during the pandemic? Um, I'm calling from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, are they, is, was that is that your training training uh, there in Colorado Springs? Yes, we're actually currently in a training camp right now. Okay, awesome. How how's, how's life with the pandemic? Uh, <laughs> different, very different. Um, training actually goes different as well. It's, uh, we have to quarantine coming into camp, take the COVID test, social distancing, you know, so it's, it's, it looks a little different than usual. Oh, so, so, oh sorry, Chief. No, no, go ahead, Julie. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so Sergeant Graham, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, how long you've been serving and why you chose the army? Um, well, I have been serving for eight years and I chose the army because it was actually kind of familiar. My mom, she actually served, she did six years. Um, so it was a little bit more familiar for me and, um, you know, I wanted to make a difference. I wanted to give back, you know, so that's why I chose the army. <laughs> and then, so you're a boxer with WCAP in the Army. So tell us about that. How long have you been boxing and what led you to the sport? Um, I have been boxing for about seven years, since 2014. And what led me to the sport was, I used to follow my sister a lot um, when I was about nine. She was a boxer also. So wow. my mom, she didn't allow me to box, so I could only go and watch. So, uh -huh. so that's how I developed the love for it. I had to sit there, I had to watch. And that one day I'm definitely going to do that, you know, um, and her trainings were intense and I fell in love with it ever since. <laughs> wow. wow. So your mom let your sister box, but she didn't want you to yeah. box. That does not <laughs> was, quite seem fair. <laughs> I, I Are you the, the baby? Yeah, I was the baby. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> the baby, so she, she didn't want me getting hit or me hitting anyone else, so... <laughs> <laughs> how does she yeah. feel about your so she, how does she feel about your sister boxing was she supportive or was she still hesitant with your sister boxing as well uh, my mom is his, she's always been supportive of the boxing but she just doesn't like to watch you know even if she comes to the fights she'll still go out in the hallway and ask people what's going on or what happened or so she, she pay, is she pacing in the, in the hallway oh no <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome so can you 
you know, I'm not really that familiar with the Army World Class Athlete Program. So can, can you can you kind of tell us about the program and how did you get involved and and what what um, opportunities are out there for soldiers that may be listening in? Um, I got involved with the program. I actually was stationed right beside the DCAP. Um, I wasn't sure what it was. I saw the athletes on the building. Um, I had originally started um, at a local gym and they told me, they said, well, you're in the army. You should try for WCAP, the world-class athlete program. And I didn't know what that was. And they put me in contact uh, with someone who knew about the program. And I went to what you call all army where soldiers come together from all different uh, posts and they, they compete against each other. And from that, you go as the all army team. And when you, they take you to a national tournament, if you place in the top six, they'll consider you for the world-class athlete program. And that's the route that I took. And uh, they wanted me on the team and I've been on the team ever since, you know, and they've been very supportive, you know, anything that I need, you know, it, it feels good to be a soldier and an athlete because I can serve my country while I still get to do what I love, you know, my passion. So. Absolutely. So is it just, is it, what sports are, lim is it limited to, or, or what, what sports are in the, in the program? Well, there's actually a lot of sports. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot to name. We have uh, track and field, wrestling, luge, uh, taekwondo. We have a lot of. <laughs> Air Force. I don't know what y'all doing now. Air Force. We gotta get. We gotta get us a program or something. I know we got. I know we we have uh, mm -hmm. our Air Force teams and stuff, but I had never heard of a world-class athlete program. So. Yeah, I think there's swimming, swimmers too, right? And uh, bobsledders, so. Yes. Pretty comprehensive. Mm -hmm. so, in late 2019, you won US Olympic team trials and you were set to move to the next round of competition to qualify for the 2020 games, which were then postponed because of the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic. So what is, what's next for you on qualifying for Tokyo? Uh, well, the qualifiers were moved to May of this year. Okay. Um, initially a letdown, of course, but I had to turn a negative into the positive uh, fairly quickly. Um, we were a week out. We were about to leave and go <sighs> qualify. Yeah. So we were a week out. We were ready to go. We had the best sparring. You know, we were ready to go. And then they told us that it was canceled. So I had to regroup, keep my mental focus and everything for the remainder of the year. So... Well, and I'm glad to hear that you're able to stay positive even through incredible, you know, disappointment related to the game's postponement last year. So um, what was this like for you? And can you share a little bit more about like, how did you battle back? What, what were things that you stayed focused on or what did you do to, to occupy your time and, and stay focused on the future? Um, it was very difficult at first, to be honest. Um, I was ready to go ahead and, and qualify. I was ready to go to the Olympics and, you know, to hear that was a letdown. So, you know, I let myself feel that for like a few days because that's normal. But then I had to tell myself, well, it's the same goal. You know, it's just gonna take a little longer to get there. So that was one of the things that I held on to. And I was like, you're just gonna continue to work hard. You have the same goals, same passion. You know, there's, there's no reason to switch up just because the dates have changed, you know? Now that's a, that's a good outlook on 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 things because you know not everything always works out the way we want it to and so just you know keeping keeping the and, and it's okay to take that in and it's okay to to feel like man this this is kind of you know screwed up but then you know being being able to kind of be resilient and bounce back I think that's that, that's good advice that you're giving everybody listening so can can you take us for uh what a, what a typical day in your training looks like and so. Uh, you know, how are you staying healthy during the pandemic? What 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 changed or, or just kind of walk us through that? Um, a typical day in training would consist of strength and conditioning um, in the mornings and then an afternoon boxing workout. In between, um, they're really big on rest and recovery and eating healthy um, pretty much. But we have two intense trainings a day, strength or conditioning and a boxing workout. So where, where where are you at right now? Because I don't I don't know what this what this what this is considered uh, mm -hmm. your interview interview That's time or is this your rest and recovery? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I'm actually right in between uh, workouts, so I've done my morning workout and I have one more later on this evening. Okay. Well, thanks for giving you know, 
squeezing us in between these intense workouts that you're having? Oh, it's no problem at all. <laughs> what's your what's your diet looking like? Ooh, um, <laughs> I eat very clean. Um, I try to get every group. Uh, so protein, vegetables, fruit, grain. Um, I eat very well. Um, most of the time, grilled chicken. I eat a lot of spinach. Um, a lot of lot of fruit. Um, and vegetables. Gotcha. Mostly. Yeah, I, just, I always think about, you know, when I'm watching uh, boxing or, or mixed martial arts, I'm thinking about how um, when they do the weigh-ins and stuff and they're trying to cut weight and they're trying to get to a certain, I'm like, man, that's too stressful for me because, uh, yeah, I, I'm not, you got to be really disciplined to, 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 uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that you stay within the, the boundaries of, of your weight class. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's best to come into camp already planning to be a certain weight. You know, so I do a lot of pre-camp training also before when I know camp is about to start about two weeks out, I'll start doing things I know I'm supposed to do get myself on a schedule going into camp also. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. And I think, you know what, I think I took somebody's question, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chief, it's all, it's all good. That was, that was good. Um, so I'll just ask yours. Yeah, just take <laughs> so, mine. That's no, all good. So <laughs> um, mental toughness, it's so critical, whether you're in the ring or training with fellow soldiers, how do you stay resilient? Um, honestly, the way I look at everything is it has to get, you know, um, it's not going to help the situation being negative about it. Um, the, it's still there. The mission is still there. Um, your accomplishment, what you need to do is still there. So, you know, I have goals, you know, and how am I going to reach them? And that's what I asked myself, what are you going to do? About it? You know, just like how we had um, the setback, you know, as far as qualifying, what am I going to do about it? How am I going to handle it to go forward and be positive? So that's really how I, I handle things. I just have to be positive. I have to just get it done, you know? <laughs> Get it done. I like it. <laughs> and then what's it like being a female in a male dominated sport? Do you consider yourself a role model at all in this sport? Um, um, nowadays it's actually changing a little bit. Women are actually showing that we can be in combat sports. If we can do the things that the males are doing. Um, I definitely consider myself a role model. I want to help people. I want people to know my story. I want people to know that they're they're able to do anything they put their mind to, you know, um, because that's what I did. I was in a, uh, an area of my life where people would say I wouldn't be where I am now. And I told myself, I said, no, like, you're going to be something. You're going to push. You're going to show people that they can do anything that they put their mind to. Yeah, I think I, as I was doing research on you, I heard that you were hom homeless at one point. I was. Uh, it's not something I talk about, lot, but okay, yes, I, I, I was. Um, and that was the point that I was referring to as, as what I overcame in my life. You know, and at those moments when that happened to me in my life, I could have just fell and just accepted that, or I could have done what I'm doing now, pushing myself to be better than that, because I know that that's not what life had for me. You know? Yeah, no, that's it. So yeah, I understand how it's difficult to talk about, but um, there's folks out there that are really struggling that probably could connect with you on that level uh, when when knowing that you came from this this you know this place in life, which they pro they probably been in as well. But just to see that you are you know just trying to set you up for that role model role that you're already doing. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Appreciate that. Sergeant Graham, you're definitely a role model and. We're kind of curious, who do you admire? What boxer? And then is there a soldier that you admire? Um, as far as a uh, boxer first, I'm going to say Ann Wolf. She, um, I admire Ann Wolf because <clears throat> we have a lot of the same background. Mm -hmm. um, she has some of the same story that I do. She was also homeless. She's very strong. Um, a lot of her fights were about knockout. She was just strong inside the ring and outside of the ring, you know, and she also continues to help people now that she's not boxing anymore. And that's something that I feel I want to do as well. So I see a lot of similarities there. Um, as far as soldier, I'm going to say my mom because 
soldier. <laughs> Good choice. Um, my mom is very strong, you know, and I, I feel I get it from her. You know, um, she showed me, she was a single mother of six kids and she took care of all, you know, and she, she always showed strength, you know, so I would definitely say my mom. Yeah, big shout out to mama out there. Uh, hopefully she watching. Let's give her a link so she can get on this interview. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as as you look back at your time in the ring and uh, including your, you know, you won gold at the 2019 Pan American Games. Which, so congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. What What do you consider your career highlight? Um, actually, uh, I would not say any of my bigger accomplishments is my career highlight. I would say the first time that I won the national championships in 2017, that was a huge crossover for me. That was the moment I always knew I could do it, but I, starting out, I was a little, you know, unsure of myself. And um, when I won my first nationals and I started going international, that was the crossover. to where I was like, okay, you really can do anything that you put your mind to. So that, that was my highlight. Sergeant Graham, we want to turn to the live feed and share some terrific feedback that you're getting from our military viewers who are joining us from all over the world. So Connor from Dallas says, greetings from Dallas. Can't wait to see you take home the gold for USA. Um, we have Army family and MWR. They say they're sharing the post and hello. We have Brian Hyatt who has a question for you. He says, I know boxing is popular at Army bases in Korea. Have you ever had a chance to box there? I have not. That actually would be interesting, but I have not had a chance to box in Korea. <laughs> Can put that on your um, bucket list of things to do. Yeah. And, then, um, <laughs> and, and the folks in Korea are lucky because uh, I, I don't know if they want that smoke. No <laughs> And then um, a poster by the name of In the Ring with Christine. That has a nice, I like that. That kind of rhymes. I like that. In the Ring with Christine. She says, great interview, and she is definitely a role model. So you're you're reaching people. That's awesome. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, Sergeant Graham, can you tell us what's ahead for you? Uh, as far as? As far as boxing, as far as just, I guess, in the near term, the next year, what? what what you got going on in the, in the hop? I know you just you're sticking to training right now to, to for the qualifying, right? Uh, yes. Uh, so of course this year, uh, my goal is to make it to the Olympics and and win gold. After that, I'm honestly not sure. I love helping people, and um, I know whatever I end up doing is going to deal with helping people and showing people that they can do anything that they want to with their life. But um, as of right now, I'm not exactly sure. After that, okay. So you're in training camp now. How how long is this training camp? How will you, how long will you be there training intensely like this? I am in camp until February 18th, and then we will be traveling to Bulgaria for the mm -hmm. training. And then right after that, we'll be going to Spain for the box am tournament. And this is all in preparation to get us ready for the Olympic qualifier. Oh, wow. So we caught you like just in time, right? Before you're supposed to get like yeah, super absolutely. busy. I'm so glad we got you before <laughs> you went abroad. <laughs> yes. Excellent. So Sergeant Graham, where can we keep up with Team USA and WCAP athletes ahead of the summer games? How can we follow your progress? Uh, for Team USA, for any sport is teamusa.org. For boxing specifically is usaboxing.org. And for WCAP is armywcap.org. Gotcha. Y'all not on the gram or something? Or, or... <laughs> the gram. She loves saying that. Listen, the gram. When, when, when one of my guests said the gram, I'm like, I'm running with it. We the gram. It... <laughs> he heard that word from his son, or I think. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Man. I'm just... uh, <laughs> so y'all not on the gram, huh? Yes. Uh, WCAP, the World Class Athlete Program. Yes, it's on okay. Instagram. Okay. Gonna have to check you out uh, <laughs> on the gram. <laughs> so uh you know we're gonna wrap this up i know you got a busy schedule you got an intense workout coming in your bed still made so i know you want to try to jump in there and probably get a nap or something before you uh you get off the interview. but thank you so much for spending time with us today uh and many thanks to our friends at mcom for making this happen so big shout out to mcom 
uh, America's Airmen, Soldiers, Guardians, Sailors, Marines, and Coast Guard members. Really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, the fact that you're able to, to uh, serve the country and also represent the country uh, in, in, in your sport is, is amazing. So thank you so much for your service and all you've done for this great nation. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> awesome, awesome. And we wish you all the best in 2021 and go Team USA. Go USA! USA! USA. USA. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Bye, uh, thanks. Chief Chat out. <laughs>